What is up everyone? Welcome back. I hope you guys are having a great day. This video is a really informal video where I'm going to try to just learn a little bit about new morphism because I haven't created any UIs that use this design style. And I don't know if this is popular or not. I just see it pop up a couple times on like different social media feeds and just pictures of it look pretty nice. So I figured I'd just take some time learning about it, recording a video of me trying to hack away using it. Here we have a generator where on the left it shows you kind of like a new morphic panel, I guess you could say. And on the right, you have the option to change the... Right, so hopefully my head's not blocking this now so you can actually see the stuff. But you have the ability to change the size, radius, distance, intensity, blur, and shape. I'll just do the shape a little bit just to kind of show you. But what I've seen is that the input boxes typically look kind of like this, like you'd use this back box shadow and border radius. But for your panels, you might want to use something like this. Um, there is a cool CSS Tricks article about it that I want to read through and I'll probably spend time reading through it tonight. But really it just all comes down to like box shadows. You literally have like a top left box shadow and a bottom right box shadow and you change the distance and blur and radius of all these things to kind of change it. And then for the input boxes, you typically use like a inner, it's called like an inset box shadow. So it's really straightforward. At least it seems like it is, but in terms of accessibility, like the forms don't have enough contrast in my opinion. My eyes aren't the best. When I see a form like this, the buttons don't like distinctly stand out from the panel, which I think is probably bad. This looks pretty nice actually. Red stapler. Yeah, so I mean here is a couple of examples of like some login panels and we'll try to just build one just for fun. Um, these, qual these quality look terrible on the right. I don't know why the images look so bad on Google. All right, so using the blur, let's bring the blur down a little bit. We can try to copy this and use it as a panel. I do have a code pin loaded up with nothing in it that we are going to try to style to build out this login page. And first thing I'll do is I'm just going to go ahead and make a panel class and paste that stuff in there. And second thing I'm going to do is put that panel class inside my HTML. So I'll do this and I can't type. So at this point, nothing's showing up because we haven't added a width or a height to the panel. So I'm going to say width of like, we'll say 40 VH or VW um, and height of 60 VH. So we got a cool little panel showing up. Now, unfortunately, it's snugged up to the top left of the page. So it'll be nice if we added some padding, maybe top in to the left. So I'll say like 50 pixels, 50 pixels, and that should bring it in a little bit. You know what, it's really hard to tell, like there's a panel there. So I don't know if maybe I need to like increase the blur. Okay, I think that looks a little bit better. You know, I think what also is an issue is that the background of my page, I don't know if I want it to be pure white or if it should be like a gray. Let's try like a gray and see what happens. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, so let us just go ahead and try to add an input box, and maybe like some image at the top and see if we can kind of style it. I'm gonna say input. And I'm gonna put a placeholder, say email. Like that. What would happen? And let's just go ahead and kind of like center that on the form, I guess you could say. So on the panel, Let's just add some more like things to be able to help us out. So I'm gonna say display is flex inside of this and justify content is center. And justify our align items is center as well. And that should just kind of center things in the middle of the page for us just to make it a little bit easier to play around with. So on the input itself, I'm gonna just go ahead and style all the inputs on the page. And I'm gonna go back to that generator here and let's just go ahead and do like an in that style. So if I were to grab this and just copy it into my input box, let's see how this looks. That doesn't look too bad. Now the issue is, is that I think the input box is pretty small. So we can add some padding to it. Let's do like five pixels. And then border of none, because that border is just kind of messing up the whole new morphism. And right now it just looks like a gray box, which is not what we want. Let me make this like 
Okay, maybe like 60%. Let me do 10 pixels of padding. All right, does that look pretty good, y'all? I think it looks okay. So the background, the gray, I think it's because the inset is set to like 20 pixels and the blur is so high. So what we really want to do is maybe reduce the blur and the uh, offsets. So I'm going to try 10 at first and see what happens. And then also reduce the blur by like 40 pixels. And that looks a little bit better, but maybe the blur is still too much. Maybe it's still too much. Yeah, let's try five instead of 10. Right now I'm just playing around with stuff. I don't, I don't really know what it should be. I guess that looks okay, but I'm not really sure. So I wish they had a generator for like input boxes. Let me see if they do have one. New morphic input box. Login div. That's how they do it with here. Okay, but what about the inputs? Inputs. Hey, it's the stapler thing we saw earlier. That's pretty cool. So yeah, check out this URL if you want to actually learn <laughs> learn a much faster tutorial about new morphic design. I'm sure this guy is explaining it with code a lot better than I am. But I just want to kind of get an input box looking pretty good. So let's go ahead. Um, I guess this is kind of what he does. Fields, padding, box shadow, username, password. So this is the, the meat and potatoes, what we want. We want this box shadow. Let's try grabbing this and see what happens. And put it on our input box. So I think the main issue is that our panel is white. So if we want to like maybe reduce the panel to a gray, it'll stand out a little bit better. And then our body can be like white maybe. <laughs> Does that look okay? Not really. Should just copy the code all from this. Dude, what background is he using? This looks like a gray to me. So like maybe this needs to be gray as well. That looks whack. Try D. Yikes, don't do that. <laughs> I think his blur on the panel is probably a lot less than mine is. Like, if I drop this maybe like 20 pixels. Or more. Okay, that actually looks better. That's that's a lot better looking. Now, I still can't figure out why his input boxes look so much better. Um, maybe he uses more padding or something. Or the background color of his panel. Uh, where does he style this panel? Box shadow pattern. Let's uh, see, background is this. Let's try using that background of the panel. Oh, his is like a bluish color. Okay, I'm gonna go back to what it was. So I think maybe his input boxes have a background of like a gray or somewhere in between the darker and the lighter. And that is kind of what we need to use. So if I go back to my input box, I should probably change the background to EEE. -E -E. And that actually looks a lot better now. And the padding, I think on the left, should probably come over more. And the font size could probably be bumped up 18. Okay, maybe that's a little bit too much. Let's try 16. All right, this tutorial is a hot mess, but let's just go ahead and <laughs> copy and paste another input box and see if we can maybe like put it on a new line. And this placeholder can be like password. Give it like a type of password. And we'll just do some hacky CSS to like get this broken up into a new line. You know, for the inputs, I'm just gonna say displays block. And that should drop them into separate lines. Uh, no? Okay. I thought it would. Isn't input display block, isn't that like what a div is? What is a div? default display. I'm pretty sure div is display block. Inline block. Takes up the whole width. Yeah, that's what I want, but like, you all saw that, right? I added display block to the input, but it's definitely not putting them on new lines. So I don't know if this is like a code bin thing or if my CSS skills are just garbage. It'd be the second one. But you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do a quick little hack because we don't really care about messing around with that stuff. I'm gonna put a line break. You know what? <laughs> okay, I know what the issue is. It is because I'm using Flexbox and it's trying to align all the items and columns. I totally forgot I had Flexbox on the panel. So I should probably say Flex Direction. I think you could say Column. There we go. 
And that was our issue. So I, I'm going to add some padding or margin to the bottom of both of these, like 20 pixels, and see if that looks okay. Uh, okay. That took a while to figure out, but we're making some progress. Let's add a button called like login. And we could go ahead and apply some pneumorphic design to that as well. And that looks like we need the, the opposite. So if I go back to my little generator, <laughs> let's grab this one. This one looks pretty cool. We're going to grab this and we're going to put it on the button. So let's style the button some. And again, we probably don't want a border. Probably want to add some width to it. The font size of like 24 pixels. Um, maybe some padding to this thing. Let's do like five pixels and see what happens. I'll do 10 pixels. Now the, make this like a lighter color instead of pure black. We'll do like, I have a gray because that seems to be the theme for everything. And one thing you'll notice is that the colors I'm using here don't look nice. So what I'm going to do is instead, I'm just going to copy the input boxes and replace that box shadow and get rid of the inset. And that should make it look more like a button that's kind of like raised. And then what else should we do y'all? Background is linear gradient. Get rid of that and see what happens. I think it looks uh, better if I just were to get rid of this. I'll do like 70%. How about that? Okay. So now, that looks pretty good. Except for when you click it, it looks horrible. Let's add like a hover state. So it might add like a button hover. And what we should do is probably just like change the background color of this to something else. <laughs> I don't really know what, but. And probably we need one a pointer cursor when we hover over this thing. All right, so let's try D. B, C, D, E. E didn't look too good, so D1, D2. Yo, what's going on here? That looks good. Still a little bit too dark. Let me try like an E4. Just kind of like a, like a nice little subtle upper effect. So yeah, we're, I think we're making some progress. It'd be nice to add like a little logo here. So maybe I can find my logo and just put it up here. Um, so let me go to my YouTube. All right, I'm just gonna try to grab my little like web dev junkie logo. And see, we can just use that. So I'm gonna right click it, say copy image address. And I think if I were to add like an image up here, just put it there. Let's see how that looks. Ooh, all right, that's that's looking pretty big. Let's let's make this a little bit smaller. So I'm gonna go ahead and do image of width of 100 pixels and a height of 100 pixels and a border radius of 50 percent to make it round. Margin bottom 20 pixels. And now we want to add that cool little, I think, outline, kind of like we did for the button. Um, I think we could probably just take the button box shadow and paste it on there and see how it looks. That looks pretty cool. Yeah, so let's look at the examples. So they had like red stapler. Yeah, they had the same like little button effect here. And then they got like a little title here, okay? So what we could do is underneath the image, Add an H1, it says like login. Then maybe like an a, a paragraph tag that says, welcome to web dev junkie. And I'm gonna put those on separate lines and do a text and turn those. So we're gonna do some hacky CSS and just say text align is center on that paragraph tag. And we are going to style the H1 a little bit. Font family serif. Is that correct? Sans serif. That looks much better. Uh, so we don't want those like serif fonts. 
let's do that. And then the margin bottom, let's reduce it to zero because right now there's a ton of margin going on. Uh, welcome to, let's, let's get rid of that break. Paragraph tag, let's add some line height, 20 pixels and see what happens. Okay, 30 pixels. Now the login button obviously dropped off the login panel. So let's go back to the panel. Let's add some height to this thing. Honestly, the height should probably just be left to allow the children to kind of expand. So I'm gonna get rid of the height in general. And I'm gonna say padding bottom is 40 pixels to add a little bit of spacing at the bottom here. And probably padding top, although the image does look kind of cool just like sitting on top there. I don't know, like, let's see what padding top looks like. So that is the login form with new morphism design. I think there's too much padding. There's too much margin on the button. Let's just do zero because I think the H1 already has padding or margin at the top of it. And I think that looks a little bit better. But one thing we could also try doing just for fun is give this like a position of absolute and then give it like a top of zero pixels and then the panel. That's actually exactly what I was trying to achieve. That looks, I'm not sure if that looks good or not. Yeah, it doesn't look good. Let's go back. Abort. Now, do people typically do like new morphism on the, the title, the text as well? Probably not because that would totally screw up accessibility. Yeah, I guess the finishing touches would be like, you know, you might want to add like a little icon, a person icon to your email form or a lock to your password form. A forgot password button. Oh, yeah, we could do that. So after the password, let's add a link with like a blank href. And it says like forgot password, question mark. And there you have it. Now it's centering that to the center and then let's add margin to that as well. Margin, bottom, 20 pixels, text align, left. I'm not sure if the flex box is gonna keep it centered, so. Uh, yeah, it looks like it's centered there. I mean, it looks pretty good centered other than that text decoration is ugly. Let's do a red, green, blue then. So red would be like 200, blue would be like 255 and green. Oh, I got them swapped. Oh wait, that looked pretty good like that. Okay, that's pretty good. All right, so what do you all think about my little form? <laughs> Again, this was a just me coding, trying to learn something new about new morphism. Again, I'm not a designer. I'm not a UX person, I'm just a coder. But I do want to improve my design skills and the best way to improve your skills is to practice building things. So. After I end this video, I am going to go back and just probably read through this so I have a better understanding of how it works. And yeah, this is a pretty cool site. So I will put this in the links in my description and I'll put this one in the links in my description as well if you're interested in just learning more about it. All right, well, thank you so much for watching y'all. I hope you guys learned something new from watching this. I definitely learned a couple of new things. Um, and that is basically new morphism is basically just box shadows that you add to the top left of your components, the bottom right of your components, and then you change a couple of values to make it look like your buttons are raised or your input boxes are you pressed into the page. I'm sure it's more complex than that when you get into it, but from the surface level we just looked at, that's pretty much seems to be what it is. But if you kind of like this format of video where I just kind of code a little bit and explain what I'm doing and just, you know, reading up on some stuff, let me know, I'll keep making stuff like this. But if you have another suggestion of like, if you want me to try to do glass morphism or try to work on a different type of page or panel. So again, thank you so much for watching y'all and I hope you guys have a good day. Happy coding.